4.1, addition and subtraction of polynomials. This uh, hopefully isn't too new of a word for us. If it is, here we go, right? So there's different types of polynomials. I don't know that this vocabulary is necessarily on the assignment. I just may use it from time to time. But for the most part, polynomial and monomial is kind of what I like to stick to. How about but this is a binomial male? Yeah, yeah, no, the, the binomial male is as well. So we'll say binomial. male. This tells you how good Mr. Sal is at typing and how good spell check is some days as well. Because I do use it. Anyways, uh, binomial, bi is two, mono, monomial, one, tri is three. Uh, technically, binomials and trinomials can fit into polynomials. Poly is many which to me I would think is two or more. But I guess specifically we can use, we may say polynomial or refer to it when it's just four or more terms. So there's no such thing as, as far as I know, although there could be, as a quadrinomial. It just sounds uh, laborious. I'm definitely not gonna go in that direction though. So uh, here we go. So there's gonna be a problem that has this vocabulary on it, okay? Um, some of it I use, I use the word coefficient quite often, terms as well, which we've talked about, um, and then of course polynomial. But the degree of the polynomial is the sum of the exponents of the variables in the terms, just the variables. So if, the, if a number in a term has exponents, I don't care about that stuff because it can be evaluated. Uh, it's the exponents of the variables. Now usually for us, we should only see one variable at a time. But we know it's possible, or perhaps we know, that it is possible to see something like x, y squared. See, so this, the, the degree of this, if this, if this was a term, would be 3. 1 for the x, 2 for the y, total of 3. Now, that, that's not an exponent rule. That's a polynomial thing, finding the degree of the term. On the other hand, let's say that we just had another term like z. If it was z, let's say the power of 8 then the degree of this individual term is now 8. But what if it was like 4z to the power of 8? It's still an, uh, a degree of 8. The, uh, the 4 has nothing to do with the degree. <laughs> Good. All right, degree of a pol polynomial is just the largest degree of any of the terms. You, find, you can find the degrees of every term. It's the, it's the one, it's the degree of the highest term, the highest degree of all the terms. And then, of course, a coefficient... Uh, is a number just being multiplied by any variable. It could be an X, it could be a Y, it could be a Z, an M, an N, an A, a B, it doesn't matter. They, um, coefficients can just be anything multiplied, any number being multiplied by a variable. And then the leading term, uh, I had to change this so if you <laughs> printed it out. Um, the leading term is the highest degree term. So it, the the leading term and the degree of the term kind of, well, I'm sorry, the degree of the polynomial and the leading term kind of go together. Same with the leading coefficient. It's just the coefficient of the leading term. Now, I'm going to emphasize this once again. If you saw that uh, you had uh, a term, whether it's leading or not, like x right here, you need to remember that it has a coefficient of a phantom 1. Mm -hmm. So I've sh I'm showing the 1, so it's not necessarily phantom anymore, but sometimes it's you may not see it. Okay then it's a phantom one. But it's, it's still there, lurking in the shadows, always watching, which is why those leading, or phantom one coefficients are kind of creepy. So addition and subtraction determine if a term is positive or negative. So um, let's say, for example, up here at the top, x, y, y squared minus 4z to the power of 8. For some reason, that 8 looks kind of like a b, but uh, this minus sign right here would make this 4z to the power of 8 term a negative uh, term because of the minus sign. I really do hope that all of that stuff is not new for us, but if it is, so be it. Okay, so first first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth, fifth term, right? And uh, we can kind of order these up here. This is first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. Um, in math, sometimes they may ask for something like, and they may say, put it in descending order. So that's in from greatest to least. This one is not in descending order, and we don't care. It's just they're numbered usually from left to right, though. So the first term here is x to the power of 4. What is its degree? Well, the exponent of the, yeah, of the x is 4. Its coefficient is a phantom 1.
Oh, that was nice. Well, what about the next term? It's a negative 5. The degree, since it doesn't have an x, we would say it has a degree of 0, which is also kind of like x to the power of 0, which is 1. It, it's kind of like a phantom 1 just with a base x. Uh, the, uh, no, no, it would not be a degree of 1 because the, the x would technically have to have a power of 0 to make it the full value of it a 1. Uh, and then the coefficient, of course, here we would just say is negative 5. <clears throat> the third term, negative 8x to the power of 2. It's degree. Again, I don't care about the negative 8, but the power of x there is 2, so it's a degree of 2 with a coefficient of negative 8. Then the fourth term, 6x to the power of 3. Uh, again, the 6 I don't care about, but, but the power of 3, uh, the power of x, which is 3, is the degree. And then the coefficient is 6. And then our fifth term is just 6x. Uh, so this is another case where it's not showing the exponent, but it's there. It's an exponent of 1, degree 1, and the coefficient is 6 again. So then last of all here, it says, uh, what is the leading coefficient? So the leading coefficient is we got to find the highest degree term, which is up here at the top, right? Yeah. So I'm going to box it in first, though. So... Uh, it has a uh, leading coefficient. Its coefficient was 1, right? What is the, the degree was 4. That's the highest degree. And you can just compare all these degrees that we have there. And so what is the degree of the polynomial? It's always going to match the degree of the leading term, the highest degree. Now, since this lesson is about addition and subtraction of polynomials, this one has five, six, five terms. Um, so it's just classified as a polynomial, but uh, one thing I would hope you'd notice on this is that, because I would check, is you, you want to notice if there's any like terms that you can combine. So just having an x doesn't make it a like term, which is also why we need to distinguish between the degrees. Um, there are x's, but they're not like x terms because the exponents do differ. But today, part of today's lesson is knowing how to combine these, even when the bases may, may be the same like this or different, and then the exponents may be the same or different as well. So if you see addition, like we see on, on this one with the two bi binomials, by because they're two, right? Two of each. Um, what we're going to do is, since it's addition, I, I, for example, if you wanted to, you could say, look, there's a, there's a one right there and distribute the one. But it's a positive one, and multiplying things by positive one isn't going to do a jack squat. So what I like to do at this point is just kind of get rid of the parentheses. and then operate from there because distributing positive ones doesn't change anything. Now that I've done that, um, I would like to combine like terms. So there, there's no need for distribution. Now we look for combining like terms. This is a general strategy for simplifying expressions like this one. And so I see this first term I've got an, uh, I don't really care about the six, but the a to the power of five is important because I look throughout this expression and I see only one other term with an a to the power of 5 um, variable and so I can combine these two. Now this will give me some number of a to the power of 5s, right? That's 6 plus 15? That's right, 21. Now that's just that one term, right? Mm -hmm. But then we have these other two are also like terms. They are a to the power of 6 terms and that's negative 3 plus 16 which is positive 13. 
Now, you, you, you see I put the, it was positive 13, so I put the plus sign there. Some students are like, you know what, I, I would like this to be in descending order just because, you know, they're kind of nerdy like that. So you could write it like this if you wanted to. This is going to get you exactly the same amount of credit. They are exactly the same. They're just written in a different order, that's all. So a quick word of caution here is some students are like, look, I got some A's. And they, even, they may even see this exponent stuff again. Since the exponents are different, I don't care that the A's are the same. The exponents are different, so you can't combine them. Please don't combine this into, what would that be, 34 A to the power of 11. That's, that's, you've changed the operation in that case a, a couple times, actually. So what if they get bigger? I really hope that the size of them doesn't matter because... Um, we can still do this, right? And again, since it's addition, I really don't care about the parentheses. Don't let the parentheses fool you, okay? Because some students are like, oh no, there's parentheses, what am I gonna do? You could distribute if you really wanted to, but there's no need to. It's just get rid of them because it's you're just adding a bunch of crap together. So, uh, but this one, we got, we got one, two, three, four different terms that I can see, x to the power of three, x to the power of two, x, and then a constant. Yeah, so we got four different terms. To combine, I'm going to start with the x to the power of 3s. Some students say, well, why are you starting with x to the power of 3? It's just the first term on the left, and I like to scan from left to right. Now, this other x to the power of 3, I'm going to show that coefficient of a phantom 1, so now that I can see the 1. I know that I'm going to figure out how many x to the power of 3s I have, 3 plus 1, which is 4. Now I can move on to my next term, which is uh, x to the power of 2 term, but I see I've got another x to the power of 2 term. That's going to be uh, 2 plus 3, which is 5x to the power of 2. And again, that 5 is positive, so I can show this as plus. And now I got some x terms, and uh, well, there was negative 7x's and also negative 7x's. Negative 7 minus 7 is negative 14, so that's how many x's I have. And then finally, constants 7 and negative 8, really it's just 7 minus 8, which is negative 1. And that's it. That's all we got to do on this one. So again, please, please don't feel the need to start combining stuff. For those of you that do have experience, don't worry about factoring or anything like that right now. Just keep it like this. Call it good. All right. So this one, um, I don't know if it's meant to be deliberately tricky or something like this, right? Like this one, y squared, y x squared. Like what the crap? You can have two variables in an expression. Sure, you can. You can have you could have ten variables if you wanted them. Uh, you, have 11. you could have 11, as it turns out, right? And, and then some students get confused because, like, this one, order the word has changed, right? Y squared, Y constant, X squared, what the crap? It doesn't even match. It doesn't matter if it matches, okay? Because all we're gonna, uh, this, since it's addition, it's just combining like terms, right? So let's get rid of those nasty parentheses there. And one and there we go. All right, now that we've done that, we're ready to combine like terms. And there are five, four different, oh yeah, four, again, four different like terms on this one. We got y squared, and that's eight plus four, which is 12, uh, sorry, y squared, 12 y squared. And then, uh, again, I'm just scanning this from left to right, so next I've got my y terms. There's another y term, that's negative seven minus six, which is negative 13 y's. Now I've got my x squared terms, and again, they're kind of far apart. This one is a 1x squared. I've got 4 plus 1. That will tell me how many x squareds I have. That's positive 5. And then I've got 6 and negative 8, which is really just 6 minus 8, which is negative 2. And this, again, is my, uh, my simplified um, expression. Now, it said add the two following binomials, I did. And it's, again, addition just means that we're combining like terms. If, like on the next problem, it's gonna show subtraction, then we're going to need a little bit of distribution. I'm gonna show the distribution, but some students like to just take a little bit of a shortcut, which I'll talk about. We do get to the point on this where it's like, I feel like I should do more. And um, that, that kind of is good, right? Like we, we've built, uh, kind of a habit of doing more, but that's it. That's all we got to do on this one. 
And so we do need to get used, especially today and tomorrow, with just leaving stuff like this. And yeah, the order doesn't matter. Here we go. Here's our first subtraction problem. When it's subtraction, the first set of parentheses doesn't make a difference at all. Just get rid of them, okay? Uh, because what would have happened is you would, if you wanted to distribute, which you could, um, you'd be distributing a positive 1 into this set of parentheses, but distributing a positive 1 doesn't do anything for us. Okay, it doesn't change any of the values. But here on the right, though, uh, I, I am going to be distributing. This is not just a 1. It's a negative 1 because of the minus sign right there. Okay. Are these binomials? All right, so here we've got the, the negative 1 to distribute, right? So, uh, again, distribution is all multiplication, and we are distributing it in three terms, and that shouldn't be a problem. We can distribute it 2, 3. We can distribute it one term if we want. But this is negative 1 times the 2x to the power of 4, which would be negative 2x to the power of 4. And then also negative 1 times the negative 10x to the power of 3, which would be positive 10x to the power of 3. And then negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. Now, I... I've, I've kind of set it up like this on purpose because some students notice, look, I really don't need to distribute here. I just know I need to s change all these signs, and then um, I, I can just drop it kind of like I did right there uh, to emphasize what I'm talking about. We didn't do anything with the stuff on the left, so I'm just dropping that right there. See, so the, the 2x to the power of 4 became a negative 2x to the power of 4. The negative 10x to the power of 3 became a positive 10x to the power of 3. Negative 3 became a positive 3. All we did was change the signs, and that's what that negative one will do into that set of parentheses. That's it. Now, if you still want to do the distribution, feel free to do it. If, if you understand it better that way, do it. Um, but, if, but some students like to say, well, I just changed all the signs. Okay, just don't change the signs in that, first set of, <laughs> in that first set of parentheses there. Well, now that we have that, I see, I still see four different terms on this one. Just some of them don't have like terms, right? Like I've got these uh, x to the power of fours here. That's a negative 10 minus 2, which is negative 12. x to the power of 4s. Uh, uh, the next one is just, it's a negative 11 x to the power of 2. I don't see any like terms to combine that with. So it just stays, negative 11 x to the power of 2. The next term even is just a negative x. Uh, if you wanted to put the 1 there, you should be okay to do that. And we use the negative 2 x to the power of 4. Next, I've got the 10 x to the power of 3, which is positive. Yeah, there's no other like terms with that one. And then finally, the positive 3 as well. So I think I said there was four terms. It looks like there's five total terms in our solution. And that's okay. Now, if you really wanted to be specific and say, I'm going to put this in descending order because that's what math nerds do, you'd have the x to the power of 4 term, x to the power of 3, x to the power of 2, the x term, and then the constant. I'm not going to do that because I'm not feeling that motivated right now. I mean, let me explain. The, the minus, right? Some students, they just apply to the 2x to the power of 4, and then they don't apply to these other two terms. That's where, that's where you have to remember that it is actually distribution. You need to change all of these, yeah, all three. Not just one, all three. And, and you know, if the parentheses was right here, you just distributed the two. That's it. Okay, so this one, now we've got three trinomials to combine, we'll say, right? We got addition between the first two and then subtraction on that last one. Here's what I'm going to do is first, we got the addition, right? So I'm, I don't really need parentheses on the first polynomial, no matter how big it is or small. I don't need those unless there's something to distribute, right? Which you could say is a phantom one. Same with this one. You'd be distributing a positive one from this plus sign into this set of parentheses. It doesn't change anything. But this minus sign right here, that's crucial. So I'm going to distribute this as a negative 1. Now, again, some of you are like, yeah, I'm just going to change all the signs. Okay, I mean, that's pretty much what I'm going to do as well. That's common. So this one, right, negative 1, we're going to distribute, oh, man, to all three numbers. And that kind of got jacked up because of technology. Thank you. But negative 1 times 6, x to the power of 3 would be negative 6 x to the power of 3. Let's got some technology going on here. And then uh, I got negative 1 times negative 6 x to the power of 2. It's going to be positive 6 x to the power of 2. And then negative 1 times negative 5, which is going to be plus 5. Uh, the rest of this stuff, 
it just right now since we did distribution it just drops okay so again this goes back to how we would combine like terms or simplify expressions i should say we did distribution now we are looking to actually do the combining of like terms okay this first term i've got an uh, x squared right there and i've got another x squared way over here doesn't matter how far apart it is we're just adding and subtracting these right so i've got an x squared term it's 9 plus 6, which is positive 15. Again, I don't need the, uh, the positive sign. Next term, I've got a 3x, and we got another 4x's right there. So that's 3 plus 4, which is positive 7x's. And then next up is a constant negative 9. We got a negative 8 and a positive 5. Okay. So neg uh, negative 17 plus 5, negative 12. Um, you'll probably want to use a calculator just to check me on that one, but... Next up, I got a x to the power of 3 term. Another one right there. Okay, so x to the power of 3 into 5 minus 6, which is negative 1. And yeah, again, this is a 1 right here, so you could make it a phantom 1 if you really wanted to, but uh, I'm okay with, with it as is. Now, just checking, did I use all the terms? Looks like I did. So this should be enough to call our answer. I'm just going to use a calculator on this one. Uh, so up here at the top, it says, hey, go ahead and find f of negative 3. Uh, see, that's, that's where the x is right there. So these x's over here also, I'm going to replace with negative 3. Now, uh, one mistake that we've seen, which it seems like I saw on the exam, was that we forget to put these, these, these negative bases in parentheses. It, it should be in parentheses. So that's negative 3 times negative 3 to the power of 2 plus 8 times negative 3 plus 2, and this is going to give me f of negative 3 because uh, we replace the x's with this negative 3 right there. So f of negative 3 is going to equal, put this in the calculator, uh, 9, negative 27, negative 51, negative 49. Oh. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. There we go. Calculator confirms it. Just do expect them to give you other values, and like they'll say, find f of negative 3 and f of 2 and f of 0. Okay. Just all you're doing is replacing these x's in here. It's more of like a review stuff.